I'm Raju Rajan. I am founder and president of Rewild Long Island. I live in Port Washington, not you know less than a mile from where we are shooting here. We are in the beautiful uh, Rewild Garden at Dodge, which is a part of the Dodge Homestead. It's a 300-year-old historic homestead that we are sitting here in. Uh, Rewild Long Island was born about four years ago, um, and I founded it with a group of folks in Port Washington. The main thing that was challenge that was facing us in Port Washington at that point in time that a whole bunch of us were angry about was there were all these like 100-year-old oaks that were growing at different places in Port Washington, mainly on the streets. Uh, and the town got together with a contractor and decided, oh, some of these oaks are in the way and some of them are diseased and some of, and they just like cut down a whole bunch of 100-year-old trees for no reason, no good reason whatsoever without any public comment. So we all got together and we complained about it. And usually what they do is they cut down these old trees and if you complain enough, they'll plant a new, what I call a lollipop tree. It'll not be a big, really canopy tree like an oak, right? It'll not grow to like 100 feet or 60 feet or something that large. It'll really go to 20 feet, 30 feet. It'll look like a little pretty little lollipop in the middle. It'll not provide the same level of environmental services. Unlike an oak, which is native, and typically an oak will have more than 100 species of different insects growing on it. And those insects are food for birds and they feed our entire ecosystem. Um, so taking away these ecosystem, like you know the, 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 the foundation stones of our ecosystem, uprooting them and putting little pebbles here and there doesn't do anything. And so we were mad about that. And then we got together and then we said, you know what? We all need to get people to do things in their own backyards and front yards first because all of us have lawns, all of us have spaces around our um, houses, or not all of us, but a lot of us have house, houses with just yards, whether it's public spaces or private spaces, which we could be putting native plants into, native trees into, native perennials into, welcoming bees and birds and butterflies and bugs and beetles and ladybugs and whatever, right? I mean, all kinds of things into our spaces because this is the only way that we are going to get consciousness about sustainable landscaping and environment. So that's how Rewild was born. We have made large transformations to this land. So it's now time, you know, we've gotten to this point where there are two catastrophes that are really headed our way. One which everybody knows, which is the climate catastrophe because the global climate is warming because of all the emissions. And the other side, we have a biodiversity crisis where there are lots of species of birds and bugs and insects and everything that are just disappearing without a trace from our planet. And that is just as bad because those species are not coming back unless we protect what we have. So from a rewilding perspective, right, really the, what, we, what we as an organization want to do is, you know, our goals are to fight the, fight the climate crisis, I mean, help with climate resilience and help grow biodiversity. And we believe this is best done by people putting on gloves and putting their hands in the ground and growing things, helping to grow things, you know, sort of help grow more native plants, grow food locally, organic food locally, um, compost, right? Uh, uh, you know, build soil, right? Remove invasives, use water very wisely, right? Uh, protect our aquifers, don't have pesticides and chemicals on the ground uh, which run off into the ocean that kill a lot of bugs unnecessarily. Right? So all these things, carbon levels in the atmosphere have been growing up since the 1850s when we started industrial agriculture. Like when we took, say, for example, the prairies in the Midwest and cut them down and put in, um, put in crops and fields. When we cut down all the oak forests around us and started putting suburban landscape and we started putting concrete and all that kind of stuff contributes to carbon chain, carbon uh, too. So the best place to put the carbon is back into the ground. And guess what native plants do? They have deep roots, they take the sunshine, they take that carbon dioxide, they convert them into carbohydrates and sugars, put them into the ground and grow the ecosystem that is beneath our feet. There's like a very rich, um, uh, you know, biodiverse soil uh, ecosystem that can consume that carbon, that can sequester that carbon, we can put more trees in, trees sequester carbon. Um, composting helps, so instead of taking your kitchen waste and your yard waste, 
putting it in the landfill where it contributes to more methane that goes out into the atmosphere. If you compost it, create humus, which are complex carbohydrate aggregates, and then put them back into the soil. So there are different ways of taking the waste streams that we create and putting that back into the soil and sequestering it. And that also creates a healthier ecosystem that simultaneously create, contributes to biodiversity, right? So you're solving both of those at once and you're interlinking the problems. Sustainable landscaping means how do we take the spaces, the outdoor spaces that surround us, right? Everybody wants a green space. Everybody moved, I mean, like, especially people who moved from the city to the suburb moved because they were like, oh, this is green. But not all green is the same, right? A lawn is green in a different way than, let's say, an oak forest is green. That lawn doesn't feed a single organism around us. It doesn't feed a beetle, it doesn't feed a bird, it doesn't feed a butterfly, it doesn't feed a bee. It, it, instead, they put insecticide, even a harmless bee that might come for a dandelion sitting on that lawn is, you know, poisoned and killed, right? So, and then all that stuff, because they typically over fertilize the lawn, then they, it runs off into the bay and then kills more things there, right? Because of algal blooms. So the way we maintain our landscapes now, even though it looks green and pleasant and beautiful and natural, it's just devastating to our environment. So we want to show that the, the worst enemy is despair because what you think is, oh my God, the climate crisis is so big and oh, we have to do the Paris Accord and Greta has to like hold a rally for a million people in Hamburg or something. No, you can just go into the backyard. You can go, you can find a place which is, you know, five by five square feet, put in three milkweed, five milkweed plants, and you will find butterflies coming to it. So you can make change in very tangible ways and not despair, but really find hope in small ways because that's always the right way to begin and then organize with other people because that is more powerful. Because then you can take all the small efforts that people do and then roll that into big change. So that's what we try to do.